Hi there, this is Carl Irwin with a tutorial. This is kind of a bit of a follow-up uh, to some of the getting started tutorials that I've made here recently concerning QTractor and particularly Carla uh, on Linux. And the question that's coming up and has come up before from other videos that I've done uh, relate to why use Carla externally when you can merely just use it internally inside of QTractor, because Carla exists as a plugin in the plugin environment. Um, I allude to this on other tutorials related to the subject that uh, Carla is not a terribly um, uh, stable plugin inside of QTractor. In fact, QTractor has uh, general stability issues with the plugin environment anyway, uh, relating to all plugins. Uh, not and not just in loading plugins, but even just with scanning plugins, uh, you'll find that the uh, plugin environment will cut will, will crash the uh, session uh, just when you're doing a scan for certain types. So that's it. But I wanted to show you. I want I want you to see you know things that you have to deal with, so you can kind of figure out which way to go here on your own, as I have. Um, we're going to try to load Carla in as a plugin in a session and see how that works out. So uh, let's open up QTractor and this is the first time I've really done it this way. We're going to see if we can uh, record this tutorial uh, by opening a session. Usually I have things open first so that I don't mess up my audio here. First thing I'm going to do is go to my patch bay just to make sure that we can hear um, what we're doing here. I'm going to turn off the capture for both of these. Um, the master here and we'll have to come back and do that repeatedly. I think uh, someone pointed to a setting uh, that I haven't messed around with yet um, but there is a setting to toggle that off uh, and we'll have to mess with that. Check that out. Uh, we want that coming in here. We also want QTractor's master out to be coming into the pulse audio uh, jack source so that you can hear uh, what I'm doing. We're not really going to write any music here. just want to show you some connections. Um, and I think that's it. That's all we really need uh, right there. Uh, we're going to connect the key, my MIDI keyboard also to QTractor because we're going to need that in a moment as well. So let's try this very quickly. Um, we're going to uh, load in uh, a track. And this is going to be a MIDI track. We're going to call this uh, Violins uh, 1. It's a MIDI track. And we'll just use the master out. Uh, we won't change the name or anything. But you could change the name. Now there's a couple ways to do this. We could use the plugin environment in the track and load in an instrument plugin. We could load in Carla and load in instrument plugins on there. What we don't want to do is we don't want to have a lot of different plugins open and running uh, simultaneously. Uh, that is to say, if I'm using Carla as my kind of instrument environment, which is a very good one, um, I don't want to have a session of Carla open for every single track. So the way to get around, and, and, and if you do that, you'll find that things crash um, right away. You'll, you'll have issues with that. Uh, so what, what we're going to do instead is we're going to send to the MIDI bus, but we're going to put the session, the Carla session, in the MIDI bus. So it'll be in the plugin environment, but it'll be related to this bus output here. In fact, let's just do this real quick. We're going to call this strings. We'll rename it just for the sake of... Uh, of uh, clarity. Okay, so we have a strings MIDI bus going out, and if we open up uh, F9, the mixer, we come over here to the strings out MIDI bus. I'm going to right click and click on uh, add plugin, and we'll go to the Carla Patch Bay plugin. And I'm going to load in an instance of this, and it does load in, uh, loads in OK. And, and I'm going to actually load up a session that I've saved in Carla already, and this is just a more efficient way to work, that if you can save an instrument session uh, that you can load up subsequently in every project, if you're, you know, a template of sorts that you're working off of, that, that can save you a lot of time and connection. So let's do this. Um, let me open up uh, one here that I've saved. Uh, this is a string orchestra session. And... It goes through the normal procedures here, loading project, and we'll just wait. It's going to load in a number of VSTs, which is nice that the VSTs work in here. Uh, SF2 a Sforzando, uh, SFZ rather, Sforzando VST player. And uh, we're going to be using Virtual Playing Orchestra, so pretty high-powered sample library 
as far as an open source sample libraries go. And you can see everything loads in, apparently, the way I've made it. Now I have a channel one, MIDI channel one is a section strings and a solo string. And then a section two, uh, MIDI two, channel two is another one and channel three and so on. If we look in the patch bay though, however, we have a problem. So you can see here that I, I have saved this um, in Carla so that my MIDI connections are are there but you notice that the MIDI connections do not persist when I load it as a plugin so that's one thing going against us this is just the first bug we're running into I have to then take my MIDI input apply it to my um, filters and you can learn about that in the previous tutorial on using Carla externally. It's the same same thing. These are MIDI filters that are filtering out the channels. And then I can then I have to connect my connections here to my section instruments in my solo. So these these connections, these MIDI connections, don't persist for some reason in the plugin environment version of Carla in Q Tractor. So that's one thing going against us. Now, if we save this, you'll find later here in a moment that these these do persist in a saved version in a Q Tractor session. However, when we're loading in, we'll have to do this uh, at least in the first run. Okay, so that works fine, and we'll just check very quickly some of the other sections, make sure that uh, other settings here to make sure things are working right, our control changes are there. So now what we should hear, um, if we just close this out, I should hear, if we turn this on too, I should be able to hear sound coming back through the master on this channel for my first violins. And if we try that out very quickly, you can hear that there is sound. And if I use my mod wheel and my sustain pedal, everything works. Okay, so articulation as well. So high velocity gets you uh, a, a, an accent. This is how the VPO SFZs work. Really, really great um, uh, sample library uh, for free. Uh, so yeah, so far so good. Let's try, let's try another one though. We're going to add another track. Uh, track two, this is going to be Violins 2. And uh, we want this to be MIDI, and we're going to use the same strings output we want it to be on channel 2. So now if I am selecting my Violins 2 track, you can hear that my uh, stereo has changed a little bit. You'll see what's going on here if we open up this uh, Carla session. Uh, oh, good, we're good. Okay. And if we take a look here, if I'm on track two, channel two, you see that it's playing correctly. So, so far, so good. Let's add another one here just to see how this goes. Track, we'll add another track. We'll call this violas because that's how I put this together. And we use strings, channel three, okay. We'll add another one, uh, celli. And again, this is, these are the kinds of projects that I do. They're usually very robust, complex setups with lots of tracks and, and orchestral uh, samples. I'll add one more. This is for the basses. And channel 5. So we have everything in there. Let's check and test. We'll select channel 5, see if we can play some bass notes. And... If I play up on the upper register, it's not playing those samples because it's only coming through channel 5 and the samples don't cover the high register. Celli. So far so good. And violas, we didn't test those. So I'm getting my stereo image. Everything that I have set up in the uh, Carla instance over here is coming through. Um, so far, so good. This is all very good. Now, the question is, is, does this persist? Does this persist? So let me open up a version of this file that I already have, and we'll see if it works. So we'll go over here, open recent. So this is a um, it really essentially the same project. And we had a crash on that. We'll try this again. And starting new, 
open recent testing Carla bus. Okay, so let's see. Now this is the same project that I just made that I've already saved. Uh, and it'll take a minute to load because we're loading in this uh, Carla session. Uh, let's open up the patch bay just to make sure everything's connected so that you can hear it. Again, I don't want my capture coming in. I'll have to toggle that setting later. Um, and we want our master out to be coming to our pulse audio so you can hear what we're doing. And I think we have it. And we uh, Our key station 61 is already hooked up to Q Tractor, so we should be good to go. If I uh, select channel 1, I should get violins. And the Everything works, so all of my controllers are working. If I come down to Chelly, very good. Um, and it seems to be working fine. Let's open this up and see see what's going on here. So if we open up the patch bay, makes me kind of nervous the way it goes. You can see that everything persisted. We're good to go. All the settings are there. Everything seems to be working uh, very well. That's great. Let's try something else here. Okay, and this is again how I would work. Um, I'm going to add another uh, another bus. So we'll come up here to buses, and we'll add. We'll call this one strings, and we'll hit uh, update. And then we'll add another one. We'll call this one Brass. Actually, we'll call it Woodwinds. And we'll hit uh, Create. Let's add another track. So let's add um, one down here. And this, this one's going to call, be called uh, uh, Oboe. And I'm going to make this a MIDI track that goes through the Woodwinds bus now. And we want this to be channel number one, channel one for that instrument. Uh, so we have that here. Let's move it down. Uh, let me add in my second MIDI bus. We'll add another plug-in. We'll add another Carla patch bay. And it opens up. We'll hit uh, open. Orchestral. Woodwinds. And crash. So this is what I was finding very consistently. When you go to load additional instances, you get crashes. It just isn't stable. Um, that's that's the long and short of it. Is that the plugin environment inside of Q Tractor is not stable, whereas the MIDI bus environment, uh, creating MIDI output and audio input in Carla tr in, in, in Q Tractor, is very stable. It's very dependable. You don't really have to worry about anything. There are some issues with persistence and connections, but again, we're dealing with just a couple of connections that we have to make when we're working in that way. You just have to make your MIDI and audio connections on each loading if they don't persist for each Carla session that you have open. So if you have three sessions open for full orchestration, three or four, you're just making about four to eight connections when you load up your, your instance. Otherwise, everything saves in a persistent fashion. So that's why. That's why I prefer to use Q Tractor for its MIDI bus output capability. Um, it's just better. It's just it's more stable right now. And there's a reason for that too. It, I, I'm, I'm, I'd prefer that the developer of QTractor focus on the MIDI sequencer side of things, the, those really important functions, making those um, more in line with kind of standard expectations and making them work cleanly, clearly, and dependably, rather than poking around with uh, instrument environments, right? Um, it can be a real headache, I would imagine, for a developer to try to make a an instrument environment, a plug -in inst instrument plug-in environment that is dependable when you're dealing with all these other instruments that are being made by other people uh, and dealing with the compatibility with them. You know, that can be a real headache. It's such a headache that I've seen on the Ardour um on the Ardor website, on their forums, you can see the developers complaining constantly about that. At least they used to, you know, about people expecting things to work for all these plugins. And they're saying, look, we don't make the plugins. We make the environment for the plugins, but we don't have any control over the development of those plugins and whether or not they'll be compatible. It's just the way it is. So, and that's the way it is in open source, too. When you're dealing in proprietary software, there's a lot more... Um, 
there's a lot more funding there and trading of information and kind of standard guidelines for creating plugins for the industry standard digital audio workstation. So things, things work a little bit better. So that's it. You know, I prefer to use the MIDI bus system and send everything out to a session outboard of QTractor. It's just a better way to work, more dependable. There's less, less of a headache, uh, less crashing going on when you do that. And for what you have to do in connections, it just, it's, it, there's fewer connections you have to deal with in persistence by doing that than you do when working inside the plugin environment, just based on the bugs that exist there. One other thing, another consideration too, is the way that that, uh, helps with dealing with the audio bus system in QTractor. When you're dealing inside of the plugin environment, you have a few more limitations. Uh, there's, I shouldn't say more as if it's good, but there's more limitations on how you route your, your audio busing. When you're working outboard, uh, you have more flexibility because you're always sending back in through an audio bus, which gives you one extra layer before the master. Uh, otherwise, what you have to do is try to use QTractor's uh, uh, rewiring and bus sending or effects sending uh, capabilities, which aren't always that dependable and are a little bit convoluted. So, um, you know, it helps to go outboard, go to an instrument or plug-in session outboard, do your mixing there, and bring it back into just one buffer audio bus that goes before the master gives you a little bit more flexibility. So those are my reasons. Just wanted to go over that. There's not really good dependability otherwise. So anyway, as we go forward, you're going to see me using uh, instrument environments separate from QTractor. That's on purpose. It's not because I don't know about the plugin environment. It's just that the plugin environment doesn't work that great right now. It may never really work that great just because of that separation of development that exists there between plugin development and QTractor development. Um, it's just you know better to go old school with QTractor and go outside and then bring it back in. So anyway, hope, hopefully you find this uh, useful and, and this makes a little bit more sense to you uh, and that you can put this into practice. So happy mixing.